At some point here, Steve, she's going to have to come clean. There is a minimal threshold of transparency that government employees are subjected to. And so when someone issues an open records request to a department or when, when there's a lawsuit pending, usually there is an attorney internally that sends an email to the employee saying, do not destroy your emails. I mean, it is customary. I'm sure lots of people watching this know what I'm talking about. And she didn't do it. Sure. And so that's why I'm saying even Nixon didn't destroy the tapes. There are thousands and thousands of emails that are missing. And uh, as uh, Roger Stone just told us in the previous segment, he believes there's a Supreme Court precedent that ruled that Nixon's tapes were not private property, and uh, he believes it should extend to Hillary and her emails not being private property. Joining us now, so glad to welcome in Linda Chavez, syndicated columnist, chairman of the Center for Equal Opportunity, and former Reagan and uh, George H.W. Bush official, Reagan administration and Bush administration official. Hello, Linda. Hello, Steve. Good to be with you. Good to talk to you. All right. Now, you wrote a, you wrote a very provocative piece um, uh, uh, at uh, the New York Post uh, that Hillary is too old to run. Before we get to that, let's focus on this whole, this whole email uh, nonsense here. Do you think that, I mean, she's going to be able to get away with this and put all this behind her? Well, I have to tell you, Steve, you know, everybody's making the Nixon comparison. And I, of course, was around and actually worked on... Uh, the Hill at the time during the, the Watergate hearings. Uh, the fact is, if Nixon had destroyed the tapes, uh, he probably would not have gotten into the trouble that he did. So uh, the, I guess the moral to that story is the Clintons have always gotten away with breaking you know, the rules and thumbing their nose at anybody who criticized them for it. So will she get away with it? I don't know. I think she's got lots of problems, as I've said in many columns on uh, her path to the White House. But my guess is um, she will, you know, try to turn this into a vast right-wing conspiracy out to get her, and she'll pay, you know, play the poor victim uh, who simply, you know, was uh, unaware that uh, she didn't uh, have to keep copies of everything that was on that server. All right, and in your New York Post piece, you uh, point out uh, the CBS News poll, which flies in the face of, uh, of a previous poll, I think, done by CNN, uh, which, uh, which had stated that, oh, no, basically no effect, for, no ill effect to Hillary from this whole email uh, situation. But that's not what CBS found. No, that's right. What they found is that uh, people do not view her as entirely trustworthy. Gee, I wonder why. You know, I mean, this goes back to her tenure uh, in the White House when her husband was president. I mean, she had... Her Rose Law Firm billing records, which were under subpoena, under court subpoena. And, you know, they disappeared. They weren't able to be found at the Rose Law Firm, couldn't find them anywhere. And then they turn up, I think it was in the bedroom in the residence at the White House, under the bed or something. Uh, I mean, this is really uh, looks more like a plot element in House of Cards than it does uh, in real life politics. <laughs> and you talk about the fact, as the title uh, implies, the title of the piece, which I don't think you write the headline, but uh, that Clinton will be 69 uh, years old next year, and uh, the same age Ronald Reagan was back in 1980. Uh, but the difference uh, in, in the, what these two people project as far as energy and age and, and exuberance is, is, is just uh, uh, tremendous. You know, Steve, everybody thinks about this, and nobody says it. I mean, it's one of those things you, you can't talk about age when it comes, certainly not with a woman. Well, I have the advantage of being virtually the same age as Hillary. I think I'm a couple of months older than she is. Uh, so I can say it. Uh, I ran for office. I ran for the United States Senate in 1986. I was 39 years old. It was a, from Maryland, a relatively small state. I was on the road 16, 18 hours a day. I know that the energy that that took, and that was very different than running for president. And I can tell you, I, you know, I said in the column, I travel 100,000 miles a year. I fly that much, um, travel even more because I do a lot of driving. Um, and I know that it's a lot different to do it today than it was when I was in my 30s and 40s and even in my 50s. And, I, you know, I just think that this is um, something that has to be taken into account if you look at Hillary, she looks tired. She looks weary. Uh, she is often not on the best form. She uh, has been, had a lot of criticism because 
she's not as uh, quick uh, on her feet uh, as you would expect a presidential candidate to be. And by the way, she's not alone. I mean, I think uh, Jeb Bush looks a little uh, worn and weary, too. He's not quite uh, the same age. But look, age does matter. And uh, I don't think that, you know, you want to have somebody who's going to be going you know, on this kind of campaign trail, right. but more importantly, he's going to be president who isn't up to doing the job. Well, very interesting, very provocative. Uh, check out uh, Linda Chavez's piece, folks, at the New York Post, uh, nypost.com. Linda, great to talk to you again. We'll speak to you soon. Great. Thanks, Steve. Thank Bye. you. All right, folks. Up next, Daniel Pipes. Don't miss it. Iran.